Welcome back, ladies and gents. Today I got one that'll hit you from every angle. The family chose a real head scratcher, Jacob's Ladder. To all the agents bugging my life, this one's for you. <laughs> from yours truly, the movie Don. Come on, roll the tape. Tim Robbins stars as Jacob Singer, a Vietnam vet who starts seeing strange creatures that lead him into a conspiracy about his time in the army. Or are these all hallucinations as he tries to process the death of his young son? I don't know. It starts off a little confusing, but you'll get gripped to your seat when the guy starts going wacko. I'm a God-fearing man myself, so I totally get how the glimpses of demons and all the other weird shit would make any man obsessed. The first sign that something ain't right is a homeless girl sleeping on the New York subway who has, what, a tail? Not for nothing, but clearly Tim Robbins ain't from around here, cause that's a fairly common sight on the L train. I mean, I've done with a few rats myself, if you catch my drift. <laughs> It's directed by Adrian Lyne, who made Fatal Attraction and Decent Proposal and Flashdance. He knows how to make a slick psychological thriller with enough, shall we say, titillation. Listen, why don't we go in the back and shag? What? Take love interest Jesse, who meets Jacob at their place of work, the post office of all places. If European chicks this hot of stacking parcels, then I'm setting up shop. It's kind of funny that in a movie about time travel, demons, and reincarnation, it's the banging broad that seems the most implausible. Plus, no way this broad could afford to dress that nice at a post office salary. Get out of here. For some, the jumping between timelines and alternative lives would be too much. I gotta be honest, I'm not even sure if there were different timelines and alternate lives. The film changes its mind more often than a state witness in a racketeering trial. Was he stuck in purgatory or was it the meds taking hold as he died? Who knows? So respect to the filmmakers for really making it feel we were in the character's mind. Kinda hard to believe that they were gonna include more in the third act. Initially, Jacob was supposed to be temporarily cured of his madness and then see Jesse's true form. But test audiences were bamboozled, so they ditched the extra twists and left the real head screws on the dance floor. I think that's a shame, because the imagery is stunning. You got some freaks peering out of subway car windows with featureless faces. You got blinking you'll miss it demons popping up left, right, and center. You even got meth junkies shaking their heads at a million miles an hour. All the special effects were live. To get the effect of the head shaking, they filmed at four frames per second and had the actors move their heads while keeping their bodies still. The end result is something that looks like a Joel Peter Whitkin photograph. There's a real attention to detail here. The scenes are bursting with life and mood and atmosphere. There's smoky rooms and expressive lighting. The whole thing is dripping in personality and flair. Good thing they didn't get Tom Hanks like they planned. He left his film to work on the Bonfire of Vanities, which ironically was the film Adrian Lyne left to direct Jacob's Ladder. Go figure. Tim Robbins was the right guy. He has enough of a baby face to be vulnerable, but enough of an everyman persona to convey a man trying to keep his sanity together. Still, sometimes it's laid on too thick. It's easy to overdo the biblical imagery, so an angel like chiropractor, yes, you heard that right, is too goofy. Some dialogue could be tighter too. Characters explain to others about what we've just seen. Ask the editor to cut in later for Pete's sake. And unfortunately, the ending, well, Here's the deal. It's not often a big studio film has a hopeless finale that works. It's tragic as much as it's happy. You can't deny that. But part of me felt it didn't live up to the thrills of the buildup. Given the conspiracy he unravels, there needed to be a bigger payoff. That's why I'm giving it three and a half stogies out of five. It's a well-made psychological thriller. It's one of a kind, but the hot postal worker takes you out of it. And the ending feels just a bit undercooked. It's trying to do too many things at once. When it hits, it hits. When it misses, it misses. All right, that does it for me. I'm your pal, the movie Don. Thanks for watching. Don't be a chooch. Hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share. I'll be back next week with another movie review. Forget about it.